today I want to spend a little bit of time using Excel Refreshable Reports for the Sales Order Processing Module. Now, I know SmartList is cool, and I know that everyone likes using Excel, but keep in mind that whatever work you do to the worksheet in Excel Refreshable Reports will stay there for the next time you want to use it. Besides that, it's faster. Recently in our company, we did a little test run, and General Ledger Data and the test company took 5 minutes and 18 seconds to pull up in SmartList and download to Excel, and it took 8 seconds on the same machine, same database, same data in Excel Refreshable Reports. You can't deny those. Okay, so I'm in the Sales series, and I've looked under uh, Excel Reports, and I see all my Excel Refreshable Reports. And keep in mind that I am using uh, Microsoft Dynamics GP 2010 R2. Now, there's two kinds of transactions that you could want to look at in sales order processing. The transaction itself, which includes header and footer information, and the line details. So let's just start with the sales transaction window. And I'm going to choose the one that's called sales transaction default. And I'm going to double click on it. Now here's all my data in Excel. Let me expand this. And you can see lots of information here. And this is the default information from the smart list file. If I want to include all potential information that are all columns that I can include, I want to choose a different file. In that case, I want to choose the one called uh, sales transaction. So I'm going to double click on that one. It'll take a little bit longer to pull up, but we're talking just seconds. And you can see I get a whole lot more information. And again, this is everything at the top and bottom of a sales document. Now, you could use this report exactly this, but I'd like to add a couple files to it based on whether or not it's a return. Because remember, if it's a return, it's going to be a negative number here. And so one of the things I want to do is take the document amount and make it negative. So I'm just going to insert a column here, write a document amount, and I'm going to just call it amount. And I'm going to do an if statement, and I'm going to say if, oops, formula if under logical, if the SOP type is equal to return, then put in the, uh, the negative amount or document amount. Otherwise, put in the document amount. And I choose to do return because that's the only one that creates a negative, uh, negative document. And you can see in this case, it does show up negative. Now, unlike when you're doing payables or receivables transactions directly, the, those have spaces at the end. These do not. And the difference is because you can change the name uh, it for payables and receivables transactions, and you can't change the name. The SOP, top, uh, SOP types will always be just that. So I've added that particular column, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to go on to my worksheet, and I'll insert a pivot table. And I'm going to go in and choose all of my columns. And I like to add all the columns. And the reason I like to add them all is because if I give this report to someone who is a pivot table person, they have the capacity to build all kinds of reports they want without having to recapture the data or having to reach out to me altogether. So it can save a lot of time. And again, this data is all refreshable. When data comes into Excel Refreshable Reports, it comes in as a table. Now, the reason this is beneficial is when we refresh the data and it gets new data in, uh, coming from GP, the new uh, any column we create, just like the amount column we created, will automatically exist for all new data records. So all new rows that come in, so that could save time. Also note, if your Excel is not large enough, uh, make sure you're on 2010 because it has the maximum amount of records. In that case, you might want to build an Excel report using the Smart List uh, Builder. And then that way you can go ahead and exclude certain things, like you could go in and exclude, for example, voided documents. And that's something we need to take into consideration. Let's go ahead and do that now while we're at it. So let's find um, the void status and put it in the report filter. And then we're going to go ahead and say it's normal. We don't want voided documents. So now what we can do, coming back to the top, we can put SOP types across on the label. And we can take our customer names and drag it down the row on the side. Oops, I dragged customer number. Let me remove that. I want customer name. 
Okay, so now I can see my customers with the amounts coming up. And what I'm going to do now is drag that new field I created called amount into values. Now it defaults as account, um, so I want to make sure I change that so that it sums it instead. So I'll click on the down arrow on my pivot table field list and choose field uh, settings, value field settings. I'm going to change that to sum, but I'm also going to go in and change it to a currency. You want to make sure you do that and the biggest reason you want to do that is because if it's a large number and you don't change it to currency and it stays as general, you're going to end up with a, a calculation, a scientific calculation instead of the actual number. Okay, so great. Now you can see what I have going on here. Now one of the things I also want to do is take my SOP type, which I have out there already, and I want to drag it into report filter as well. And the reason I want to do this is so I can choose which documents I want to see. If I'm looking at posted transactions, for example, I'll only want to see returns and invoices because those are the only ones that I can post. And in this case you can see the net sum amount of them, so it's giving me just the net of that, which is kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and find the document status and drag that into a report filter so I can tell it I want posted transactions. And now I can see transactions that are specifically posted. And uh, so another thing I may want to do is put in some filters for date ranges. So let's do this now. I'm going to come back into my table and near the amount here I'm going to create um, two new columns. We'll do it right here and insert. And I'm going to have a column for the year and a column for the month. So the first thing I'll do is I'll come in and do a formula for the date and I'll select the year. So now it's asking me what year do I want. So I'm going to find the transaction date. So we'll close that out and now you can see I have the year posting all the way through. And we're going to do the same for month. Under date we'll choose month and we'll select document date. So now when I come back to my spreadsheet, let's update it here. So we'll click on data and refresh all and now I have my two fields here. Now I'm using Excel 2010 so in this particular case under my pivot table options I want to choose a slicer and the slicers I'm going to choose are year and month and what that does for me is it enables me to use these fields here so I could choose specific data. If I want to see transactions that were posted for 2010, period 1, I now see sales data here. And I could also come in under options and choose to add a pivot chart here as well that represents that data. So now here's my data as we see it. Now uh, one of the things that we could also do is drag SOP type down under customer name so you can see invoice amounts or if there's return amounts there. And you could even put um, document number here. Now keep in mind as you add it your pivot table is going to keep increasing. So you want to take that into consideration as you go along. So now with my sheet here I have this really cool report that I can balance out. So if I want to look at period 2014 for the month of April, for the month of May, if I want to look at April and May together, I just hold my control key down. If I want to clear it all, I could do that as well. I can then also choose to look at unposted de data. One of the things I want to do in my SOP type here is then go through and say I want maybe what's on order only. So I can pick and choose which ones I want to receive. So I can see order information the sum of the order and the count of the order. So I can see how many orders there are and what's the sum of them. And again I have the capacity to look month by month, year by year, and so forth. It's a very cool way to work. I hope this helps.